Hi friends, Simit here from InformTrades.com. And today we're going to talk about the relationship between bond prices and bond yields, why they're inversely related, and what that means for traders and investors. Let's get started. Okay, key points. First up, the price and yield of a bond are inversely related. So as the price goes down, the yield is implicitly going up. Second point, the longer the duration of a bond, the more sensitive it is to changes in interest rates. So if the interest rate goes up just a little bit on a bond with a 30-year duration, that will drastically, that will more significantly impact the price of the 30-year bond than a small interest rate change would impact a shorter duration, like a one-year or five-year. And last point, whenever you hear the term bonds are up, they're referring to the price of the bond, not the yield. So if someone says bonds are up, that means the prices of bonds have gone up, yields have implicitly gone down. Okay, it's a lot of information that might not exactly be intuitive, so let's delve a little bit more into it, break down each component. Okay, prices and yields are inversely related. You can see that on the screen now. As the price is going down, yields going up. Remember, yield is basically the coupon as a percentage of the price. So this sort of should make some sense in that the coupon payment is going to stay the same. If the price goes down, it is now a larger percentage of the price, and that's why a downward movement in price is equal to or results in an upward movement in yield. Let's go through an example of that. So let's say there's a bond, and let's say it has a par value of $100. Let's say the person who bought it bought it directly from the corporation issuing the bond. They paid $100. The bond uh, has a coupon of $5 per year, so its annual yield is 5%, right? Coupon over par, $5 over 100 equals 5%. Now, let's say a new bond comes on board. Okay, now that new bond, let's say that same corporation, you know, interest rates have gone up. The uh, lenders are now demanding a higher interest rate for macroeconomic reasons. So that new, co that new bond that the company issues, they have to issue a $6 yield to entice borrowers to lend the money. Okay, so now someone could either buy the old bond, which has $5 uh, coupon for a 5% yield, or they could buy the new, new bond, which is yielding $6 coupon payments per year, which is a 6% yield, right? Obviously, every investor would choose the new bond because interest rates have gone up. They get more return on their loans. Okay, now, if what happens as a result is that the old bonds have to change in price, have to lower their price to equal the new bond, right? So in order, if you have an old bond and you wish to sell it, well, no one's going to buy it for $100 when they can buy the new bond for $100 and get a better yield. However, if they might buy the old bond if the price goes down to the point where the yield is the same. So if the price, in this instance, the price were to fall to $83.33, a coupon payment of $5 will yield 6%, right? Because 5 over 83.33. So that's the basic idea of how a change in interest rates, interest rates going up, causes the price of existing bonds to decline, right? So now, if the price were to fall to $83.33, an investor may say, well, I can pay $83.33 and get a $5 coupon, which equals a 6% yield. Or I can buy the new bond, pay $100, get a $6 coupon for a 6% yield. It's basically the same thing. Uh, and that's what happens when new bonds, when interest rates are going up, the price of outstanding bonds that are already in the market needs to decline so that they remain competitive with the new bonds. And that's the basic idea. That's sort of the, the root of how this inverse occurs. Now, longer duration, the more sensitive it is to rate moves. And if you think about it, this makes sense also because... The longer the duration, the more coupon payments there are. So if you have a bond that only has a duration of two years and interest rates go up after you bought the bond, well, it, it only affects a small number of coupon payments, right? If you only have one coupon payment left or two coupon payments left, it's not as significant. You've got the bulk of your uh, interest payments, coupon payments, so a small change isn't going to make that big of a deal. If, however, interest rates go up in year three, and it's a 30-year duration bond, well, now you have 27 years of coupon payments left. That's quite a few coupon payments that you're getting at an older interest rate, right? You could have, ideally, you could have invested at the higher interest rate and, you know, get all those higher coupon payments for the duration of the next 27 years. So in that, in, in that sense, bonds that have more coupon payments left, they're going to be more sensitive to interest rate changes, basically. 
If interest rates go up and you have 50 coupon payments left, you may need to sell your bond. You may need to discount it. As a result, the price will decline significantly because of all those coupon payments are essentially yielding less than what new bonds of a similar rate and duration uh, would yield. And that's the basic idea. Hopefully that makes a little bit of intuitive sense. Basic idea is more coupon payments, more sensitivity to changes in interest rates. And that's about it. Any questions you have, anything you want to add, join us at informtrades.com. This is a little bit of a uh, counterintuitive concept at first, but once you think about it and get the hang of it, it, uh, it definitely makes a lot of sense. Vital concept to understand in terms of the overall bond market and how this can impact uh, stocks and other markets as well. Uh, join us at Informed Trades. Best of luck in your trading and investing, and we'll see you next time.